I come from the soul. What a people we always live by the sea. They say home is where you find it. Will this place ever satisfy me? Well, welcome everybody to I See You, Morris in Oceania, sharing our vacation. In our first episode today, we have Ruth and Daniel with us, and we'll start with our first questions. Ruth, where do you call home? Right now, it's St. Joseph's um, Tenero in the Solomon Islands. So the capital here is um, Honiara, and um, uh, we are located, I think, east, east of um, Guadalcanal or East Honiara. Um, the population here would be around 708,000 plus. Um, there are different um, uh, religions here, and the main ones being um, Catholic, Anglican, um, some um, United Church, some other Protestant churches. Uh, currently, only have one school here in, in the Solomons, and that's St. Joseph's. Um, the brothers recently pulled out of um, St. Dominic's at Banga Point in the Western Province. So we only have um, one school now in in the Solomons. So <clears throat> right now we have only um, two Maris brothers now and, and, and two young men, uh, two novices who are in formation. Uh, we only have one community here um, at um, Lao Manasa, which is also the formation house here. And, and it's in... Uh, St. Joseph's at Tenaro. And Daniel, where do you call home? Uh, home base here is in Otatahi, which is Christchurch in Aotearoa, New Zealand. So the South Island uh, of New Zealand. The capital here being Wellington. We have uh, nine communities here uh, throughout New Zealand. Uh, in the north, up in Kaikoi, which is close to that birthplace, the cradle of Christianity in New Zealand. Uh, six in Auckland, which is our main uh, number of communities. One in Lower Hutt, which is just outside of Wellington, and just the one community here in the South Island in Christchurch, where I'm based. So 53 Maris brothers in New Zealand, um, all in the mature age and the wisdom stage of, of uh, average age of 75 plus, and uh, obviously not involved as much in the, the front line of the ministry, but very much involved in the spiritual life and the growth of the future of our charism with our partners and mission. We've got eight uh, charism-based parish primary schools in, throughout New Zealand. Uh, but in the secondary sense, we've got uh, four order-owned uh, secondary schools. So the Maris Brothers, the proprietors of those four order-owned schools, uh, including an alternative education centre in Auckland. So included on top of those four schools is this eight charism-based diocesan secondary schools throughout New Zealand as well. So Ruth, what brings you joy or what are you passionate about? Um, my, my children or my family, um, um, raising kids well, uh, being married, the work I do for uh, to support the brothers and with the brothers. Yeah, we have an indigenous Maori term called Fano, and Fano represents family, not just your nuclear family, but uh, wider than that too. So obviously uh, with you know my, my wife and two children um, you know spending quality time there because in this fast-paced world I guess uh, there's lots going on but just being present with them in our lives and the, the passion really comes a little bit a lot of people have a life a work-life balance that they're after but I guess for me it's a, a you know, the joy of being able to work alongside the brothers and uh, Champagne Maris in our district of the Pacific it's all about empowering local people to lead so I think with that, uh, it, it means about sharing our gifts and, and bringing people with you. So that's great. We've had a chance to get to know a little bit about where you're from and what you do in your spare time and what brings you joy and passion. And now we'll go a little bit deeper. Um, we're very curious to find out, Ruth, uh, starting with you, how you first got involved with the Morris. If you could tell us a little bit about that. Thank you. Well, it started way back as a child. Uh, my um elder cousin brothers and uncles uh, attended a Maori school. So that sort of started. I, I remember visiting the, the school um, with um, my family, seeing the, my cousins there or my uncles. 
and then later on um, when I first started teaching in a Maori school um, that was in Bougainville and um, sadly it's no longer a Maori school now it's uh, it was a bishop where it's um, Tallinn, um, working with the brothers and I guess that uh, that's where it all started yeah I, I think like a lot of us it's uh, that first connection is through our own own family I think it was through my grandfather so uh, I guess if I try and sort it out it's three parts first part would be really through my grandfather um, and my uncles are taught by the Maris brothers so in a way it was quite usual to have uh, the brothers around home and it so now we come to uh, the question about a lay Maris vocation and just giving your understanding of what you see that phrase means to you, a lay Marist vocation. Um, for me, it's a, it's a calling from God that, uh, and it's all about um, working together with the Marist brothers, and, um, especially in, in the Marist groups and working with the young people, those who most in need. I think that's what the Marista lay vocation means to me. But also I think raising if you have a if you have a family, raising your children well, I think that's the basis of uh, lay marista. My lay marist vocation. I've got to get this one out of the way. When I saw saw the word vocation straight off the bat, it made me think of a colleague I worked with and we had a review office round. And uh, they mentioned about why is this school special? And the teacher said, well, it's a vocation. And the review officer said, oh, so you don't get paid. And our colleague kind of looked a bit strange and went, yeah, we get paid. So whenever I see the word lay maris vocation, sometimes I, I start off with a laugh because I think of that, uh, that story. But to, to me, it's an invitation. And with any invitation, it causes a reaction in us. So that's how I'd see the lay maris vocation to start with. But simply, I'd put it as, as a heart journey uh, that offers me uh, an opportunity to live out my faith in an authentic sort of Marist way. And that's being a disciple of Jesus in, in the way of Mary. And also making sure that family is part of that. I can't be that by myself. So being part of a bigger family or a bigger community. Ruth, how have you been formed and accompanied in your faith journey as a Marist? Um, attending um, various um, formation or spiritual workshops, uh, courses or retreats run by the, the Maris. And I think uh, more formation comes from also working alongside the brothers. Like I had uh, worked a long time with um, Brother Mark Kenazzi, Brother Clement, uh, uh, the late Brother Mark Poro. Um, they, they're truly inspiring. And, They've taught me a lot about my role here as, as a Marist. I, I think for me, it's, it's a lot of uh, walking alongside significant Champagne Marist, whether it be brothers or lay, uh, part of my journey. And, and it's all through a lived example. So a lived example of some of those significant Champagne Marists in my life. And all those whom I, I encounter, even in the privileged position I am, you know, encountering people in Melanesia, Australia, and throughout the Pacific and, and beyond in the global world. But I think it's just those words of wisdom sometimes and, and giving and giving support to, to prayerfully kind of discern, but do it your way. I think that's what's really the encouragement and support that I've had. So just terms like the charism being caught, not taught. And when that's given uh, by some of these sort of significant people, including brothers, then it makes sense. So I think it's that earthly uh, side of things, the making sense of it but just trying to say that it's not about getting to a point that just encouraging and supporting you to to bring out the gifts in you uh, for the betterment of all is um how you experience community and belonging as a marist i think for me it's the the family spirit that is very obvious in the communities especially when you're moving from or visiting or traveling from one community to another, you always get that sense of family spirit and the simplicity in it all. That for me is very uh, obvious. Very similar experiences anywhere in the Marist world that I've been, I've felt at home and at ease. And you can't say that uh, 
or sometimes to a stranger, they don't quite get what you're saying. But yes, that sense of just being comfortable, the hospitality, the sense of welcome and, and being part of a bigger family. I've always sensed that no matter where I've been in the Marist world. Um, I guess, you know, uh, a lot of formation programs with staff and students and different ministries, it's another extension of that. But I think locally here in Christchurch, when I'm based, we've only got three Marist brothers in the whole of the South Island. And uh, they're just part of our, our whānau, which is a, a, a part of our family. So, you know, involved in my children's upbringing, being part of the wider family. And it's not just a nine to five thing. So my experience as a Marist is, is you know, embracing all and being part of something bigger. Okay, so Ruth, I invited you to share a Marist object or symbol that has special significance to you. So what have you got to show us today? I have this um, rosary beads. Um, I think this uh, is, is um, represents like prayer and how we stay connected, even though, like right now, we're not physically connected, but through prayer, I think uh, all Mars are, are connected to the prayer. This one is uh, even more special because it was sent to us by the, uh, the Mars in, in, in Sydney, in Australia. So the image I have here is about connection as well. It's a indigenous Maori culture um, here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. It's a pikarua. So the pikarua, uh, it's the pico part of the word is a, is a fern, a pico pico. Um, so a native plant and rua means two. So a pikarua is looking at two becoming one. So it's a partnership uh, symbol. So there's no beginning. Uh, there's no no end. Uh, it's an eternal bond. Um, so a symbol would represent between brothers and the lay people coming together as partners in mission. So it's a sign of strength, um, interwoven lives, and it does symbolize both life and growth. So it's an infinite partnership and something that we hold quite significantly in this part of the world to uh, symbolize that relationship. Well, look, thank you very much for all of those wonderful sharings that you've given us today. Uh, it's been a real joy to learn a little bit about your Maris vocation. And please know that you are seen by the Maris Association of St. Mars and Champagne. And we look forward to seeing you again very soon. <laughs> Oh, uh -huh.